Today we are raising Gaming. I've heard from a lot of my Genshin friends that he's actually really good and quite fun, so I'm looking forward to learning about him and doing this showcase. As always, we gotta start with raising him. I farmed some Star Conscious yesterday, but uh, they won't be back, so we'll have the God Mode soonish, but we have to do Lantern right first because he's only C5. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna continue getting him up as much as possible here anyway. Already going to level 60, so we might almost have, yeah, we need one more boss run here and then we can get him to 70. Uh, it usually doesn't take very long this guy is quite weak, especially if you have a strong Hydro team. And just a few little XP there, and there is level 70. Since we didn't do a preparing for for him, currently on screen are all the mats he requires for Ascension. We did already have plenty of books, so we didn't need to farm those. But yeah, let's learn a bit about him with the Talent and Constellation review now. His basic attack is pretty standard. I like the final strike where he stands on a little energy pillar and hops off. That's really cool. His charge attack is another Beyblade. For Claymore users, this is my favorite type of charge attack. Gaming skill, much like Cloud Retainers, is basically a plunging attack. He'll basically only roll forward if he doesn't hit an enemy, but if he does hit an enemy, he'll get launched up into the air and can then immediately do a plunge attack. This special plunge attack via E does rely on the skill's multipliers much like Cloud Retainer and her Drift Cloud Wave. Again, we will test to make absolutely sure his normal attack skill doesn't matter in this case, but for now that's what I'm assuming. Upon landing, he will consume 15% of his own HP, and he cannot go below 10% of his max HP. Gaming's burst is actually really interesting, so he'll summon a companion, which will attack the enemy Gaming is focused on. Once the companion's attack is finished, it'll roll back to Gaming, resetting his skill. If then, when he does another special plunge attack, he is still above 50% HP, he will summon his companion again, and the cycle resets and resets. So you have 12 seconds to do as many of these cycles as possible, getting your skills, cooldown reset, doing another plunge, summoning another companion, etc., etc. With his first passive Dance of Amity, he basically becomes a prime hunter set user. So he loses 15% of his max HP when doing a special E plunge, but with his first passive, he'll regain 1.5% of his HP every 0.2 seconds for the next 0.8 seconds, giving him five different HP changes in the span of a second. His other passive gives him healing bonus if he's under 50% HP or if he's above 50% HP, a damage boost for his elemental skill. His exploration passive is a little weird, but we've seen it before. We get a 10% movement speed bonus for the team, but only during the day. Personally, I prefer playing in daytime and often I am just skipping the clock forward if it's nighttime, but yeah, I still don't really like the time requirement. Looking at constellations now, C1 sounds kind of underwhelming. Basically after doing burst, the companion does the attack and comes back to Gaming, it'll heal 15% of Gaming's HP. This, I'm pretty sure, will make him pretty much completely self-sustainable, so that's something I guess if you wanted to solo with him or just not take healers, but since I feel like he is especially going to be good with like Farina, with all the HP increase, decrease stuff and fanfare stacking faster, you kind of should have a decent healer anyway. C2 gives Gaming a 20% attack boost if he receives overflow healing. It's only for 5 seconds, but I imagine this will happen pretty often if you have any other sorts of healing in your team. C3 is talent levels for his skill, which I think is more important than his burst, so that's cool. C4 has him restore two energy every time he does his special plunge attack via skill. It doesn't sound like a lot, but again, after doing burst, you can do multiple plunges in a row. I've heard from one of my Genshin friends you can do five of these plunges during burst, so that would be 10 energy. And since his burst only requires 60, it's a pretty good chunk off of that. C5, of course, then being burst skill levels. C6 is a simple but very nice constellation. 20 crit rate, 40 crit damage and the radius will be increased. It's the only one I won't have footage for because we don't have it yet. Very, very nice C6. So knowing all that, we are actually gonna focus on his elemental skill primarily, but we're just gonna get both skill and burst to six. Also, as a quick aside, if you're enjoying the video, a like or a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. My current goal is to hit 600K subscribers before the heat death of the universe. I haven't decided which constellation I'm actually going to get him for the showcase. I think like C2 is generally fair for a four star, because then god modes are always C6 for four stars. Moving on to build, which weapon should we give him? After looking through all the great swords, I've come to a couple of ones I think would be good for him. This one we got from the event is basically just a big stat stick. It has energy recharge main stat, but a lot of attack in its passive if you've helped all the me Meluzines. Has high base attack as well, which is what he scales with, and energy recharge, I mean, everyone needs a little bit of energy recharge usually. If you want even more attack, Tidal Shadow has attack percent substat and still pretty decent base attack, and at R5, the same 
same 48% attack the event weapon gives you. What bothers me a bit about this event weapon is I have no idea how many of these villagers I have helped. I'm gonna equip it and see if there's like any indication on the weapon itself. There is like an icon popping up, but it's really hard to see. Are those the different uh, Melusines I've helped? I'm kind of curious. So we have 512 attack now. He's not built yet, of course, but I'm going to do this and I'll be back and I'll see if my attack actually goes up. Ooh, that was actually a pretty long quest. Okay, no. <laughs> so I actually did some research. I know, crazy. So there are apparently 11 different quests down here involving these Melusines. Each quest unlocks one sixth of the power down here. So you only need to do six of them. Completing more than that doesn't give you more power for the sword. I did the main world quest down there a while ago and I just did one of them down there and I would expect we get at least 513 at the very least from an extra 4% attack. So I guess if you're unsure, just equip the weapon, take note of the character's current attack, do one of those quests and see if it goes up. If it doesn't, it's, it's already maxed out. And there we go, the final star. We did have to do a bit of crafting, but don't wanna bother you too much with that. 565 base attack again is like, the highest for a four star pretty much there are a couple exceptions but it's rare it goes much higher than that you actually can see stickers around the sword as well now i honestly would just go serpent spine because it's such a cracked four star claymore but it is a battle pass weapon it's not free so we'll stick with this one when it comes to artifacts we're probably just gonna give him hunter like a lot of characters recently but especially in his case it's not just because you know farina makes it easy but like he himself makes it easy he takes his own hp from e he gets it back with first passive he doesn't need any else to take full advantage of the hunter set 36 crit dude you just like it's really hard to beat that i mean golden troop and it's 45 percent skill damage is fine as well you'll never have the other 25 percent unfortunately in that case i think shimanawa can be interesting as well i mean it's 50 percent plunge attack damage the main problem i see is that because his burst can reset his ease cooldown you would want to do e first which would take 15 energy away, and then you would need to get that 15 energy back before doing burst. I think it could be interesting, but I'm not gonna bother with it because I feel like that'll complicate things. Crimson Witch, always a solid option for a pyro DPS. I still don't think it's as good as 36 crit rate, but if you haven't gotten around to farming this set yet, then it's always a solid option. So a quick look at the substats. I'm not going to explain them, just pause and look if you really want to, uh, but we do have attack main, pyro, and then crit damage, of course. None of them are particularly insane. His main stats are okay, I suppose. Ooh, we are very low on HP at 13.8. 2200 attack though, which is pretty high. Around 82 crit rate with the stacks, 147 crit damage, a little low on crit damage actually. Should have enough energy recharge. We got the pyro goblet, you know. And I guess since this is raising mode and it's supposed to be free to play, we are gonna try and go with a, as much of a free to play team as we can. Though I really would have liked to use Freena and Sien Yun. We'll save that for God mode. We will 1000% have Binny in there. That's just a no brainer. I do wanna do some plunge vaporize and seeing shows like still the best off field hydro so we'll have him in there and we would have to do a normal attack after each plunge to activate his passive water but i think you're kind of supposed to do that anyway to cancel the animation i think this could be pretty good though shanling might be taking away some of gaming's vaporizes uh with her pyronado so i could swap her out later we'll see we haven't done the solo daily quest challenge in a while so we'll start with that just uh gaming by himself here okay i don't think that's combat no it's not indeed this one's not really combat either. Just gotta destroy these barnacles. Ah, here we go, fishnado. All right, boom. <laughs> okay, it wasn't very impressive, but uh, I mean, they have shields right now to be fair. So just wait till I get my ultimate. Then you guys are gonna be feeling the pain. All right, here we go, here we go. It's over for you guys now. So we're just gonna keep spamming ease whenever it goes back off cooldown there. Yeah, so we already got one off, come on. Where did the dude go? Oh, we have to be above 50% HP. That's bad. If we weren't soloing, it would have worked. We got rid of one already. All right, shield gone. Boom, 11K. Actually not even bad solo. All right, that was a little tough to be honest. Oh no, a timed battle challenge. I'm gonna at least heal him first. All right. Yeah, that was like a 14K. Unironically, not bad with no buffs. Okay, he interrupted my plunge. That was so stupid. But they were very generous on the time they gave us, so that was actually pretty easy. We'll go and use the full team now, and we do have some resin to use. How am I doing on these books? Oh my god, okay. I'm not sure if we can take care of uh, Emperor of Fire and Iron since it's a fire dude, you know? Uh, but we'll try one run. I mean, we actually have time to basic attack while waiting for our skill to be off cooldown anyway, so it's fine, honestly. I mean, actually, we should be able to do it pretty easily. We're still doing like 15K to this dude, which is pretty impressive. 
I think Shanling is stealing all of our vaporizes though, which is kind of annoying. But I mean, that went perfectly fine. It took obviously a little longer than with my whale last Nouvellet team, but you know, it still worked. We'll try the new artifact domain. Unfortunately, we have no geos in this team. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, a lot of elemental things. I kind of forgot which enemies we have here because again, I'm usually just kind of wailing through them in a few seconds. So it like literally doesn't matter, but this will be a little bit of a problem with this pyro slime here. He's definitely taking a bit longer to actually uh, get out of here. We're unfortunately out of Benny ring now. We haven't, oh, I mean, there there was a 30K. It's not, not horrible. Those artifacts sure are though. Ugh. Let's try whale weekly boss. <laughs> Ramping up a bit in difficulty now. So we couldn't do much preliminary damage on him. Uh, but we'll see what we can do when he gets disabled here. Granted, we can even beat this thing. <laughs> Ooh, there was a 50k. That must have been a vaporize, I reckon. 52k. Oh, Benny's, Benny's buff is unfortunately gone. Yeah, this dude is back now. We gotta destroy his shield. Now we should be able to do something against the whale. Alright, here we go. We're gonna start off with an E and then uh, do his burst. Just keep basic attacking until the E comes back here. There we go. We got a little 46k. I mean, nothing insane here, but we have a, like a lot of passive damage going on from all of our other, uh, other supports. So they're, they're doing stuff as well. I mean, we almost got the whale down. So not horrible, honestly. He has a bit left. I'm hoping we can take care of that before we have to like get swallowed again. Oh, okay. There we go. Definitely a bit more of a pain than usual, but again, not really an issue. What about Shogun? Ow! I was a little too careless with those exploding things. But I mean, we halfway killed her before uh, she got her shield, which is pretty decent, actually. Oh god, this thing. Uh, oh no. Okay, we got it. That was close, though. Jump rope time. Now's the time to do stuff here. All right, let's start with that. Get that there. Just keep, uh, keep normal attacking. No vaporize, unfortunately. Yeah, I think Shanling is really stealing all the vaporize. Let's try the first chamber of floor 12 just for fun here. I mean, we could have like one five star, right? When we we're going for floor 12. Let's get Zhongli. Yeah, I don't know. That was a pretty dumb rotation. They just kept moving out of Bin Ring, so I had to also. I mean, <laughs> one of them is dead after a minute. Yeah, this definitely isn't going to work. Did get like a 50k there, I guess. Yeah, 51. That's about the highest I've seen from one of his plunges so far, which obviously isn't as impressive as the buffs we saw with Sien Yun and stuff. Um, okay, hey, wait a minute. We got through this side with seven minutes and two seconds left, which means if you just have a decent enough team and kill the serpent here in two seconds, it's basically like floor 12 viable when you think about it. Now, nah, I mean, I probably could have done a little bit better. And obviously I would just take Sien Yun if I was going to take a free five star, but I don't know. I feel like that's kind of cheating a little bit. Okay, fine. One run with Sien Yun just for fun. The people who have Gaming probably have her since like they're on the same banner and all kind of makes sense. A part of me just kind of wanted to save the really cool stuff for uh, God mode. But I mean, it's still going to be so much different when he's 90 in a five star weapon at C6 anyway. All right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that is a little bit different. I uh, just saw a 120. It's hard to see what we're actually doing now. I did definitely see a 120 something earlier, so we're definitely getting a big boost. Yeah, there was a 118. We're not even in Binny boost anymore because the dude's outside of it. Still not a super fast run, but it is at least like probably possible to kill the serpent in a minute 10. Right though, we also got to do one quick test since I said I would, but I'm pretty sure it's pointless. 5146. Yeah, 5146, non crit, very consistent. We honestly should be able to just like level it up twice just to make sure. 5146. As suspected, it doesn't do anything for his plunge attack. In his case, though, I don't think basic is completely useless because as you saw while we were playing, we do need to wait a few seconds for uh, his burst dude to come back to him. So it resets his E, which means, you know, we could get a couple normal attacks off. And especially if you have Binny, he's going to be infused with pyro damage anyway. So uh, could be some decent normal attacks there once he's actually raised. And then if you have Sien Yun, you know, you could do an E plunge and then perhaps a 
normal plunge just by jumping. So then the basic attack would really matter because it would definitely rely on this multiplier then. I suppose that'll pretty much do it though. All in all, I think he's a really fun character and has a lot of potential, especially with Sien Yun. I feel like mine is especially weak for this showcase because we also forced him into a only four star team, but I guess that does make more sense for a raising mode anyway. That being said, I am looking forward to putting him in my whale team when he's level 90 C6 with a five star weapon, etc. C is like at least closer to his full potential. Until then though, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks as always for watching and until next time.